It's been one of those days where I just can't seem to warm up. Like no matter what you do, that's today. That's what's happening right now. So made, made a cup of Joe extra hot. Hopefully this helps. We're gonna set the mood for this one. This is like storytelling 101. Love this candle. So a little over a year ago, I was able to film for my first ever kind of short film passion project that I was really excited about. The opportunity kind of presented itself. I was talking to my cousin, Scott, who is a nice climber, super passionate about it and has progressed a ton over the last year. If you Today's video, I wanted to break down into kind of three different sections, pre-production, production and post-production, the process, everything that went into the planning all the way to the edit. Okay, first section, let's talk about pre-production. What is pre-production? Pre-production is the planning phase before you're actually shooting. There wasn't that much planning. There should have been, but there wasn't. Essentially, I reached out to my cousin Scott and said, hey, I would love to join you on any sort of adventure, whether it's just mountaineering or one of your ice climbing, I would just love to be a part of it and document it for you. About two months later, Scott reached back out to me and said, hey, I have this project that I wanna do. It's called the Rigid Designator. It's in Vail, not too far, about a two hour drive from Denver. Sign me up, I'm on the next bus out. Uh, it's currently 5 a.m. On our way up to shoot the Designator. I wanted to take it a step further. I reached out to Scott and said, hey, would you be comfortable just coming over Let's sit you down. I want to talk about this story. Why is he doing this? What is so significant about this specific climb that can bring something more to this video? So we shot the interview about a month before going into the climb. Everything turned out great. We got it in the first take. We got all the questions we needed or I felt like we needed. A lot of the shoots that I've done have just been, let's go outside, let's see what we can come up with. I got this idea, but I don't really have this idea and let's just see what we come up with. One of the mistakes that I did make with this film is just not having more of a kind of pre-production storyboard of the shots that I really wanted. We just filmed. We tried to set up as many angles as we could. This is insane. Scott's going up. That one, the designator. They're all down there getting their stuff ready. Holden. Hey, trying to get all my gear ready too. We're gonna get set up. Get in our places, get the drone up, get Scott climbing. And it worked out. But one thing I would recommend is just having a little bit more organization going into the shoot so that when you get there, you know exactly kind of what you're doing and it's not gonna go as planned, but then it just gives you a guide on what you wanna accomplish. Excited. I'm excited. <laughs> Sweet. Just gotta stay warm real quick. Yeah. I know. It's gotta heat up in the car before we hike out. <laughs> 12 degree weather. <laughs> Is it 12? Yeah, yeah it's 12. <laughs> then it came down to the gear prep. Everything was charged, packed, ready to go. So there weren't any delays. If I had any delays, it would have just thrown off the day. Now we get into the production. With the production of the interview process, pretty straightforward. Had some shelves behind him, put his gear up on the shelves to make it look like, okay, this is, this is an ice climbing film. This guy's ice climbing. He's got some tools, some rope, his helmet. We also set up two different angles. And from there, it was just going back to the planning of having that list of questions that I wanted to ask him that he felt comfortable answering and making sure it aligned with the story that we were trying to capture. The day of the ice climb, that production is a little bit different. You have one chance to get this. Let's see what we can do. When you have someone who's getting a wide, someone who's getting a medium, and someone who's getting a tight shot. It just gives you so much more flexibility in post-production to be able to use different shots at different moments. We had five cameras that day. Three DSLR mirrorless cameras set up, one on a tripod over here, one on a tripod over here, and then one kind of down here shooting up at the climb. We had the GoPro on top of Scott's helmet. As he was climbing, we wanted kind of that POV, really get a raw sense of what is it like to be climbing this climb right here? Ooh, no thanks. Leave that one to you, buddy. If you have a fear of heights, you're not doing that. But we also had the drone, and the drone had some just key shots of establishing 
the grandness of this climb. Once the production started, we just kind of went. We just went with the flow. Whatever came natural, came natural. But don't let yourself get overwhelmed. Overall, that's gonna deter you from capturing what you wanna capture. I hope you guys are enjoying this so far. Make sure you hit that like button. I appreciate it. it helps this channel, it helps us grow as a community. All right, third section. We're gonna talk about the post-production. We've got all our footage. We're gonna bring it in. We're gonna organize it. We're gonna do all this stuff, but I gotta move from here. So we're gonna need to go over there. Can't fix this. Quick transformation, number three post-production. Got my computer, my edit set up right here. The edit was done in Final Cut Pro. I kind of mix between Final Cut and Premiere just depending on the project. And it really doesn't matter whether you're a Final Cut user, Premiere, DaVinci Resolve, whatever editing software you're using, I really am not going into great detail on how the timeline is set up, the organization, what tools I'm using within the timeline. It's more just a quick rundown on how this timeline's set up and what I did as far as a brief organization of how I set up the clips. Let's get into it. So here we have my timeline. And what I did initially was in any software, or editing software, I kind of organized myself. I've created a video already on this organization process. Be sure to go watch it, it's on the workflow and do this before you start any edit. So here we have our basic timeline. Now I'm gonna bring this up. Essentially what I did is I started with our interview and in their interview we have all these clips. Essentially I highlighted all the gold clips as my gold audio. So just gold for, that's what I wanna use. I wanna use these somewhere in the film, set the story. And then we came into our feature film and we kind of built this out. The way I structured it was this main timeline here, this main bar here, that's my foundation. So that's what we did. We just built around this and you can see everything else is just your B-roll that surrounds it. So let's zoom in a little bit. This first portion right here, before we get to our first clip of Scott starting to talk, is just kind of laying out what this film's gonna be about. Where's the setting? Those are all kind of things I wanted to establish prior to Scott coming on, talking about what this climb is all about, what it means to him. We start it, we have a nice scene that sets kind of a cool winter feel, overlaying the B-roll that matches exactly what Scott is talking about. Once we kind of establish this, I wanted a really dramatic scene of him progressing through the climb. We get through this initial part of him talking um, about the climb, what so it means like to him. That with just like super radical environments and kind of like maximizing the, what I like to say, the radicality of where you are. Because I had a good microphone on the camera, I was able to capture some of this raw audio from Scott talking about how he's feeling. It's gonna be fun and just cruiser and beautiful. <laughs> Now we're getting into the dramatic scene of him starting the climb. It's in this like giant, you know, half cave. You know, it's a it's a large ice. So again, matching the screws, screws into, with and, him talking about um, how you can set deep you know, screws into the ice. Big chance of like breaking it down. So many different angles. So we have a tight shot here, pretty wide angle there, point of view shot. We have the drone shot that's really wide. So really just making sure that you have different angles. With the drone, you could get kind of above him as opposed to all the shots being below. This way it gives you kind of a little bit more of a feel than just the GoPro. I think the whole process and what I can kind of speak to on this film alone was really just taking the time to sit down, submerge yourself in all the clips, going through every single piece of clip you have and figuring out the best way. Because at this at this point, it just becomes a, a puzzle. So you're figuring out the best way that you can piece all of these to your overlaid audio, which was the interview. But above all, like tailor it around story. Because if you find that one piece of story, the film will just kind of come together so much easier and it makes it way more interesting to watch. Okay, that wraps it up. Third and final section, we're done. Thanks for sticking around. Couple last things I'm gonna leave you with. Plan, the more people you can get involved, honestly, the better your film's gonna turn out. This film would not have been what it is without Holden and his wife tagging along, getting those extra angles. So huge thank you to them. Huge thank you to Scott and his 
his friends for creating this scene, inviting us, allowing us to join them on this pretty epic climb. So I hope you got something out of this. I hope it helps with some fashion of filmmaking for you. Please like, subscribe, helps this channel, helps us grow as a community. Drop a comment. I would love to hear your thoughts and we'll see you in the next one.